Hi friends, I am Yakuta Karthanamala and today we are going to see about a topic subject programming for problem solving. In short, we tell it as PPS. Let's take some brief overview of this particular subject with respect to the university point of view. The subject code is 3 double one triple zero three. This subject is offered in all branches of engineering in first year. And the teaching scheme for the subject is there are three lectures and two hours of practicals per week. And the subject credit is for this credit is useful for calculation of the final year or final result in terms of SPI and CPA. Now let's understand the marking system of the subject. It carries a total of 150 marks. This is further divided into two parts. One is theory and another is practical. The theory is of 100 marks and practical is of 50 marks. Theory is further divided into two portions. ESC that is end semester examination and second one is PA that is progressive assessment. ESC is carries of 70 marks and PA is carries of 30 marks. P is normally calculated by the internal exam set has been conducted by the institute itself. The practical is divided into two parts, ESC Viva, which is of which is of 30 marks, and PA progressive assessment, it is internals based upon your assignments, weekly tests, and so on, and case of 20 marks. So this was all about the basic concept with respect to university of now let's come back to the programming language that is C. Why do we require to learn this C language? So let's understand this concept. See there are two persons who want to communicate among themselves. So for communication between the two persons we require a language. The language can be either English, Gujarati or Hindi. But when a person wants to communicate with a computer, then also we require a language, but the language is a programming language. Any language like C, Java, .NET or Python can be used for communication between a person and the computer. This C, Java, .NET these are all your higher level languages. So in short we can say that if you want, if a person wants to communicate or a programmer wants to communicate with computer, we require a programming language and we are going to learn C language for this. So, let's see some few more details about C. It has been developed by Dennis Ritchie in the year 1972. It's a very, very old language and still popular in recent times. This is a picture of Dennis Ritchie. It is used, this particular C language is used in operating systems like Linux, Windows or Unix. Many of the portions or parts of this OS have been developed using C. This is one of the reasons of the popularity of C language. Not only OS but the programming languages are also developed using C. Say for example, C Sharp and Java, they are also developed in C language. Let's see about some few more applications related to C. The first one is embedded systems. Uh, if you want to run Excel or program any electronic devices then we require some programming language and in many of the embedded systems C is still used. Not only embedded systems but network drivers these are basically used for communications between two different computers which forms a network and if you want to execute this particular network there are drivers, softwares which are developed in C. Next is database system. The database systems are basically used for storing large amount of data in a systematically manner. So the systems are also developed in C language and for this point the last one is compilers and assemblers. Compilers and assemblers are basically used to convert your higher level language into uh, machine level language. Machine level language is in your binary language that is 1 and 0 format because a computer only understand 1 and 0 language. Okay, so this was all about history and some techniques of C. Now what exactly we are going to study in this particular 
C programming subject. Okay, so let's understand what are the different topics that we are going to learn here. The first one is understanding the structure of C program. How to write a string program? Program. What are the different parts of any particular C program that we are going to start understand using the structure of C program? There are many things that you need to take care and you need to follow the rules and regulations of writing a C program. Otherwise, you might come across some errors in your program. Next is data types. We will see what are the different data types available in a C language. These data types are basically used to store some type of data in your computer. The data can be either integer or it can be flow, decimal point or it can be a character or a string. Then we are going to come across input output concepts. Input output concepts are used in if you want to take some data from the keyboard or display it onto the monitor, then we will be using this input output concepts. The next one is conditional statements, which are very, very important, which are very important uh, concepts that we are going to use in C language. Conditional statements are basically used to test for some conditions where the output will be either true or false. Say, for example, if I want to test a very simple thing that I want to test whether a number is greater than 100 or a number is a prime number or say a character is a vowel or not. Then such things, such testing can be done using condition statements. Then we have looping methodology, another very very important uh, methodology that is used in C program. Basically loops are used when you want to do some repetitive task. Say for example, I want to display a simple message onto the screen, not for one or once or twice, but for 100 times or 1000 times, since the looping techniques will come into picture. Next is, uh, if you want to store some large and different varieties of data using programs, then you are going to uh, use the concepts of arrays and structures. Next is dynamic memory allocation, that is whatever large pool of data we have now, if you want to store it, efficiently inside your memory during runtime or you, when you execute your program, then the dynamic memory allocations are used. And the last but not the least is file management system. File management systems are basically used to write, edit or delete some contents of your file, which are the files which are stored in your computers using a C program and file management will come into the picture. It's a very, very interesting topic. And all the students love working on file management system. So this was all about the topics that we are going to learn in this subject. So that's all for right now. Thank you very much. Stay healthy and safe.